If you watch this channel even somewhat regularly, you will know two things about me. One, I'm a very conservative person. And two, I appreciate good political communication skills. And that's why today I feel the need to call out the Federal Conservative Party for one of the dumbest political attacks I've ever seen in my entire life. Here's a headline from Sudbury.com, and it is not an exaggeration. Tories blast Trudeau for lavish retreat at Sudbury Holiday Inn. Yes, it is a lavish retreat at a Holiday Inn in Sudbury. For those of you who do not know, Sudbury is a very working class northern Ontario town. It is not exactly a destination for lavish vacations unless you are like glamping or something like that with your own RV. It's definitely not a lavish time at the Holiday Inn in Sudbury. But for some reason, the Conservatives, and specifically Sebastian Skamiski, uh, a communications manager or regional manager for the Conservatives, th this was the quote from this press release or this email that they sent to their members. It says, Today, Justin Trudeau took a surprise trip up to Sudbury to appease his Liberal MPs from Ontario at their swanky retreat before the summer's end where they will discuss ways to make life more costly and miserable for Ontarians, especially those in northern Ontario. Okay, it would have been a fine email if they just said they've come to Sudbury to basically just discuss how they're going to make life more unaffordable for northern Ontarians. They don't actually care what we think, and they are just here to pretend that they care about northern Ontario in any way. But to say it is a lavish retreat in a Holiday Inn, just because Trudeau, in other cases, has been known for lavish type expenses when he goes like on foreign trips where they're spending tens of thousands of dollars more than they need to. Yes, the prime minister of a country should be well appointed in terms of the rooms he stays in when he's on foreign diplomatic trips and whatnot. And I don't care if Trudeau spends a lot of money on a vacation. I only care he spends a lot and he goes on tons of vacations if he only took two weeks of vacation a year and they were expensive, whatever, he's the prime minister, but he goes on like 50 days of vacation a year. But if you're the conservatives, why would you not have somebody read over this email and then smack the person who's about to send it upside the head and say, never apply the word lavish to a holiday in, in Sudbury. This is a very stupid win that they just handed over to the liberals because now the liberals all day long and the NDP are calling out Pierre Polyev for having high-cost fundraising events, which isn't bad either. It's a fundraising event. You're having people pay $1,700 to help fund the party. People, that $1,700 isn't a lot of money to, they show up, have dinner, talk to Pierre Pauly if he delivers a speech, and it helps the party run in the next election. Every party does it. Every party who can put together a large fundraiser does it. You can't even donate that much in Canada, so I always find it ridiculous whenever they say a high-cost political fundraiser. $1,700 would make any American politician yell at you if you thought that you sent them a lot of money. They would yell at you and say, get me $30,000 because $1,700 is not that much money. But they just opened the door for the liberals to counterpunch them and pretend actually it's Polyev who's the lavish living politician. And it's obvious, he's obviously not. It's obviously not. It's, it's people like Justin Trudeau who live far more undeserved, lavish lifestyles than Pierre Polyev. It's Jagmeet Singh wearing Rolex watches at the same time he's pretending that he cares about workers at all. But, again, you don't... If you, A bad political attack allows for a better political counterpunch. This is a fundamental rule of Canadian politics. Uh, a, a punch that does not land opens the door for a counterpunch. And this was a horrible attempt at a punch. And I'm also making this video, just make it very clear that I'm not making some sort of conservative propaganda channel. I go after the NDP and the liberals all the time because I disagree with them a lot. It's not like, you know, that guy I've covered a couple times on the channel, Steve Boots, who pretends, oh, he only talks about, like, you know, conservatives all the time because they lie so much. He just doesn't like them. That's why. I don't like the ideas of the liberals and the NDP. I talk about them a lot. But... If the conservatives do something stupid, I will have to talk about them. A video from me will be coming out soon on why Danielle Smith needs to right the ship and figure out actually how to govern, because she is not focused on actually achieving conservative priorities by the next election. And if she doesn't, she is going to have a very major problem organizing her base. I want her to succeed, even though...
back in the 2022 leadership race, I was warning people, she's actually a lot like, more like Alison Redford and Ed Stelmack than she is like Ralph Klein, even though she portrays the opposite. So we will have to call her out when she needs it if we want her to do the right thing. We need taxes cut. We need the gas tax cut. We have a massive surplus, and we're celebrating that apparently. At the same time, we're not lowering taxes. We're spending on like high-speed rail lines that nobody asked for, and our budget's 20% higher than anything Notley or Kenny ever passed. That's a problem, and I will be calling that out at some point because I care about principle. Not like these lefty channels who will attack Doug Ford for doing things that Kathleen Wynne was doing five seconds ago that they never cared about when it was Kathleen Wynne doing it. It's bad, but they don't care. They just care about the particular label of party that's doing these things, which is why they really don't call out people like Justin Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh, or in the case of British Columbia, uh, David Eby. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. If you want to donate to the channel, there is the legal fund in the Give, Send, Go link in the description below. And if you live in British Columbia, make sure you've donated to the BC Conservatives because they have a major disadvantage fundraising. The BC NDP and United get millions of dollars every year by basically forcing the taxpayers to give them a subsidy per vote that they got in the 2020 election. Actually insane. And David Eby has made that subsidy permanent. Anyways, see you guys later.